Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Impressive for people to wake up naturally. It's only 9 a.m., but welcome to another podcast. We're in for a doozy of a topic today. At least for me, it's a doozy of a topic. <laughs> Impressive to wake up naturally without an alarm, though. Ugh. But I guess we'll do the quick old uh, plug all the channels. Uh, I got a Twitch at twitch.tv backslash DJ underscore funky underscore fresh. YouTube at youtube.com backslash DJ funky fresh gaming. And everything's on Spotify under funky bunch at Sunday brunch. Pretty easy. Pretty quick. Uh now, the one thing I haven't figured out what to do today is exactly what order do you guys want to know things? Do you want me to jump into my neurological issue? Or do you want me to jump into my knee issue first? We'll do both. And yes, I am getting better because I'm not taking my time on each of them. Neuro? We can start with neuro. That one's easier. Well, that one's more complex. But... <laughs> People have less questions about it. Okay, so. My family on my mother's side. Well, it's less brain, it's more of the nerves. I don't know. I see a neurologist. It's not necessarily the brain, so, but, so, my family on my mother's side all has something referred to as Charcot Marie Tooth, and it is a, a group of disorders which uh, cause nerve damage. Right, Ray, right. it is the wiring. So, the damage for Charcot Marie Tooth occurred primarily in my arms and legs in the peripheries. So, it's also referred to as hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy. Um, it results in the individuals having smaller, weaker muscles, as well as loss of sensation and muscle contractions, as well as difficulty walking. Uh, People with Charcot Marie Tooth or CMT also have foot deformities, such as high arches and hammer toe. So, yeah, <laughs> that's the main stuff. So, some of the signs and symptoms for CMT is a weakness in your legs, ankles, and feet, loss of muscle bulk in your legs and feet, high foot arches, curled toes, Decreased ability to run, difficulty lifting your foot at the ankle, awkward or higher than normal step slash gait, frequent tripping or falling, and decreased sensation or a loss of feeling in your legs and feet. I can tell you that I have weakness in my legs. I have loss of muscle bulk in my legs. I have high foot arches. I have a very decreased ability to run. I have an awkward and higher step gait. Uh, I frequently trip or fall, and I am losing feeling in my peripheries, in my feet, and in my hands. Slowly. So, as this next statement says, as Charcot Marie Tooth progresses, symptoms may spread from the feet and legs to the hands and arms. I also have the loss of muscle bulk in my arms. Actually, because of CMT, I have a lot of difficulty just building and gaining muscle as is. So the fact that I have any muscle at all is honestly a surprise. <sighs> so like I said, CMT is in 99% of cases inherited and it's genetic. And we'll actually jump into what causes what exactly is the uh, factor that determines if you have CMT? So, sometimes the mutations can damage your nerves. 
but there are other mutations that deter that uh, damage the protective coating that surrounds your nerve, the myelin sheath. Uh, and those cause weaker messages to travel between your extremities and your brain. So that's actually happening to me right now because of the CMT in my hands and in my feet. The myelin sheath that's covering my nerves is starting to unravel. And uh, that's why I'm losing sensation in my hands and, and my feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so more specifically, I have CMT type 1A. Because uh, back in... Do I have the date on this report? Back in 2006, I went and donated, well, I didn't donate, I did a blood test to really figure out exactly what I have. And oh my god, the amount of blood they had to take out of me. It was a thick vial of blood that they took out of me. Ah. <laughs> uh, Mm -hmm. But what they found was uh, two things. One, I had a duplication mutation of the PMP-22 allele. The PMP-22 allele, if it is duplicated, then that is a sign of having CMT1A. I also had a sequencing alteration of the MPZ sequencing. It was an unknown variant, but it was not as major as the PMP22 duplication. However, the MPZ is a sign of the uh, myelin sheath unraveling, but we'll jump a little bit more into the MPZ a little bit later. So. Specifically, CMT type 1A uh, affects your peripheral nerves. So, which means I have the weakness and wasting of the muscles of the lower legs and arms, and the hand weakness and sensory loss. Funnily enough, I dislocated both of my thumbs when I was recovering from one of my surgery. I was trying to slide myself backwards across a... Um, chairs to get into a car because uh, when I'm recovering from surgery I'm in a straight knee brace so I can't bend so I'm sliding myself back I pop both of my thumbs out my mother of course didn't want to believe me that I had dislocated something else so she ignored it and it's kind of uh, confirmed that both of my thumbs have healed dislocated so I can't use my thumbs any pressure on my thumbs causes intense pain. On top of that, I have severe hand weakness. I have hard time gripping things and other stuff. It's just <laughs> weakness. <laughs> uh, so Uh, with all the issues I was having, I don't blame my mother for not listening. She also didn't listen when I first subluxed to my knee, but we'll get into that later. So, uh, with CMT1A, the abnormal nerve conduction studies have found that I'll that it will either start in babies or toddlers, or it will start once you're about 20 years old or later. Or in the rarer cases, it appears in the middle. Or in my case, when I was about... 14? Yeah. 14. <laughs> uh, so, like I said, specifically, CMT1A is caused by having an extra copy or the duplication of the PMP22 gene. As well as this is an autosomal dominant disease. So to be more specific, an autosomal dominant 
uh, disease is a pattern of inheritance characteristic of some genetic diseases. Autosomal means that the gene in question is located on one of the numbered or non-sex chromosomes. Dominant means that a single copy of this mutation is enough to cause the disease. As such, any child I could potentially have in the future has a 50% chance of having CMT. In the case of me and my siblings, all three of us lost the coin toss and we all three have CMT. <laughs> yeah. Specifically, uh, treatment for this condition is physical therapy, occupational therapy, braces, and other orthopedic devices, surgery, and pain medication. The severity and degree of disability varies very much among the affected people. It is quite the oof. Uh, it's a lot worse on my mother's side. We don't know how bad it could get for me because my grandmother has the foot problems really bad and she also had knee problems. Um, I'll connect why CMT plus a couple of other uh, deformities with me cause my dislocations. You wouldn't be here if your mom found out you she had MS three years prior to you being born. Wow. Intense. Um, specifically, um, a lot of the people on my mom's side, like her aunts and uncles, cousins, like they're in wheelchairs, like a lot of them have trouble doing day-to-day -day things. Like they have very severe, not just CMT1A. So it makes me wonder if they were, uh, not only marrying other people with, uh, CMT autosomal dominant, uh, issues or others <laughs> but right it it was just you know yeah so let's see so people with the CMT1A are slow runners in childhood develop child high arches hammer toes and often require the use of braces for ankle support so I haven't actually had the foot problems, personally. I have the high arches, and I have very tight uh, Achilles tendon, but that's about it for me. My brother had the foot drop because his uh, Achilles tendon is even tighter than mine. So he had surgery on that, on both of his ankles, to fix his uh, foot drop. which is very good and he hasn't had any of the knee problems he just had the uh foot problems but the surgery helped and the fact that he's always been super active super muscular -y. like he was a swimmer all his life like even now he runs probably 20 miles a day well actually he got in trouble he only runs about 10 miles at a time 20 miles a day <laughs> He's having some knee issues, but that's because he's running 20 miles in one go. Because he's uh, training with his fiance, because his fiance is going to run a marathon. Uh, let's see. People with CMT1A may develop hand weakness about 10 years after their foot and leg problems develop. So for me, I don't know when my hand weakness started, but it does kind of line up with 10 years after my knee problems started. Let's see. Problems with balance because of ankle weakness and loss of proprioception, which is the brain's ability to know where your limbs are in space, are common. Thankfully, I don't have ankle... Well, actually, I have trouble with balance. I'm not sure if that's ankle weakness or I'm just bad at balancing. And 
And then, of course, I would honestly hate to lose my uh, sense of knowing where my limbs are in space. Proprioception sounds absolutely horrible. Like, I can close my eyes and I know exactly where my hands are. I know exactly where my feet are. Like, unless, of course, you know, I start getting that floaty, spinny feeling, you know, where it's just like I don't feel like I'm grounded and I'm flying through space. Like, unless that's pre-o- uh, proprioception. I'm just saying, like, you know, you close your eyes, you don't know where your arms are. So, like, I could flail my hands and I would hit myself because I don't know where it is. Uh, with all the shit my brother's doing to himself and having this neurological issue, how good is that for me? Like, what do you mean by how good is that for me? I don't really understand what you're trying to ask with that. But, um... Let's see. <laughs> well, in general, um... He didn't have any of the knee problems. And I'll go into uh, some of my limitations with my knee problems later. So, for him, running, being super active, swimming his whole life, he built up a lot of muscle. Um, as well as the fact that his CMT1A looks to be only focused on his feet. And the fact that he was constantly, he's running, he's working out and all that, he's keeping that muscle build up. So like I said, one of the suggestions they had for this is PT. And just the fact that he's constantly building his body up and keeping that muscle up, he probably will not have any knee problems until very late in life. Because he has those, his muscles are working how they're supposed to. His muscles are um, keeping things in place. Because I was never that active, I didn't exercise so much as a kid, my muscles atrophied, and um, I struggled to build those muscles again. Right now, my muscles are to the point where they'll keep everything in place, but I don't know how much more I can build up from there. Just because of how hard it is for me to even... Right. Yeah. So I'll jump slightly into what the MPZ sequencing is. It, MPZ stands for the myelin protein zero of the Homo sapiens human. <laughs> so this gene is specifically expressed in Schwann cells of the peripheral nervous system and encodes a type 1 transmembrane glycoprotein that is a major structural protein of the peripheral myelin sheath. The encoded protein contains a large hydrophobic extracellular domain and a smaller basic intracellular domain, which are essential for the formation and the stabilization of the multi, oh my god, multilamellar structure of the compact myelin. Mutations in this gene are associated with this autosomal dominant form of sarcomere tooth type 1, B, and other polyneuropathies such as Dijerin Sota syndrome and congenital hypomyelinating neuropathy. So basically, MPZ is <laughs> is your myelin sheath normal or mutated? But uh, yeah, that kind of just sums up my uh, neurological issues. Um, the only suggestion I got that I could do, like, taking medication back in the day was they found a potential study that taking large amounts of vitamin C would help strengthen your myelin sheath. And so from 2006 until probably about 2016, I was taking about 1,500 milligrams of vitamin C a day. And those were giant horse pills of just pure vitamin C powder. Not the tastiest. 
But I mean, like... Try swallowing a giant thing like that. I mean, I'm used to swallowing pills, so... It wasn't the worst for me. Why did I stop? Uh, because studies ended up finding out that it did not do anything. And all I was doing was giving myself a ton of vitamin C. So, I mean, it was one of those. It's not hurting, but I also started getting really bad uh, at remembering to take it. Because I never could get myself into the swing of things. I couldn't get myself onto a good rhythm or anything. So that kind of, you know, causes slight issues when you're just, you know, you forget to take it, then you take it. Um, I also have really bad hand tremors, probably due to the weakness. I used to take uh, the drug propranolol to do it. However, it uh, slowed my heart rate down a lot when I was doing it. So anytime my heart rate, because I already have super low blood pressure to begin with. And so when I was taking propranolol, my blood pressure just plummeted even more. So anytime I got worked up, you know, and my heart was just kind of going crazy, like, it was bad, but my hand tremors are so bad, but I stopped taking it because I was just like, you know, I forget to take it every now and then, and when I'm just constantly, you know, going on, going off, going on, going off, my hand tremors were just explosively bad, and I mean, now they're still bad, but it's not as bad, and even taking the propranolol uh, all it did was take the severe shakes and reduce it to slight shakes. So it's not like it stopped my hand tremors. It just mitigated some of the worst. All right. So you guys want to know the uh, schedule of things I've done with my knees. <laughs> Ugh. So, I have a approximation timeline of my knee issues. Unsure exactly how accurate some of these are. <laughs> my fucking knees. So, the this is the second subluxation because my mom didn't believe me that it happened the first time because she didn't want to believe that I had the same issue she did. So I have one knee subluxation that I don't know when it was. It was probably in the fall prior to this because we went to a festival. And I was complaining from the pain, and my mother refused to believe me. But, so for those of you who want to know what a subluxation is, it's where your kneecap partially dislocates, but it pops right back in. <laughs> so, the second kneecap subluxation was my left knee, February 7th, 2005 at the age of 12. It required about eight weeks of physical therapy. <sighs> so, I don't really remember how bad my knee swells with a subluxation, but really what it did was, you know, obviously it causes me to have some severe anxiety with even now, I still have severe anxiety about doing anything. Um, but we'll get into some of those after I get through this. So the next thing on this list is, I don't know how right this is, but 
apparently exactly one year later on February 7, 2006, my right kneecap dislocated at home at the age of 13. Four months of physical therapy. <laughs> because do you know how horrifying it is to look down and there is a gap where your kneecap should be and instead it's sitting on the outside of your knee. How did it happen? To be honest, I've never been conscious when uh, it's dislocated. So my brother and I were just kind of roughhousing right next to the couch. He just, you know, pushes me and, you know, I fall over onto the couch. Except for the moment he touched me to the moment I'm on the couch, I don't remember. I blacked out. So clearly I twisted or something and my kneecap popped out. <laughs> my brother felt very guilty and he bought me a cookie. Because <laughs> he also had to go to a uh, swim. He had swim practice right before then, so, you know. It took my mom a little bit to realize that my screaming wasn't us playing, it was me in pain. <laughs> yes, a cookie was a proper present. And when she did, she realized that shit's gone down. So, naturally, because of this, my knee blew up like a balloon. The swelling was intense. And obviously, four months of physical therapy. Um, this is where I started wearing a, a J knee brace every day for almost the rest of my life. <laughs> <sighs> Not really. I don't wear braces anymore. Um, so what a J knee brace is, is it's in the shape of a J obviously I don't need to anymore for several reasons and they're very uncomfortable so what the J knee brace does is I'm trying to remember where the J the bottom portion of the J goes I think it is so it's hugging your kneecap so I think the hook of the J is at the top and then the rest of it hooks around kind of down the outside so what it's doing is applying slight pressure on the kneecap so that every time your knee you know it bends so as a hinge every when it's bending it's supposed to be following a groove in the track of your knee and the J brace is supposed to keep guiding it to continue doing that so it's designed specifically to prevent dislocation to the outer side So yeah, and of course, obviously, nine months later, November 16th, 2006, dislocated my kneecap at school, at gym. It was dislocated for over 30 minutes. Once again, we were playing some stupid game inside. Don't remember what happens. I just wake up crumpled on the floor in excruciating pain. The only difference that has happened is that anytime I have dislocated my knee at home, I am screaming in pain. Anytime I've dislocated myself outside of the home, I have managed to hold in the screaming and calmly have told people what they need to do. So in this case, dislocated my kneecap. I kind of look over for my gym teacher and I kind of call over and I'm like, um, I just dislocated my kneecap and I need help. <laughs> Uh, so they evacuated the gym because obviously you can't do anything while that's happening. I had my knee brace on. No, did I have my knee brace on? No, I don't think I had my knee brace on at the time. I had jeans on though. 
cries and squirrel. Very nice monkeys. Um, and obviously they, they, like, they don't know what to do. So obviously the first thing they do, the school does, is call 911. Second thing they do is they call my mom. My mom was on the way to the vet to drop off my dog, to, or to take my dog to an appointment. My mom gets the call as she's walking into the vet. She hands the dog to the vet and says, I have to go. And then she just fucking yeets her way down the street to uh, my school. That's why it took 30 minutes. But like the ambulance comes and the paramedics are there and they don't know what to do. Like they take off my shoe to make sure, you know, that I have a pulse in my foot to make sure like the blood is still flowing in my leg. But like they don't want to touch it. The gym teachers don't want to touch it because in today's society, everyone is so litigation crazy that they don't want to do something. But like, uh, from what I've been told, a dislocation is significantly more painful than a break. They're not supposed to, but you know, right. But, I mean, here's the other thing, like, back in the day, like, my mom's, my mom and my grandmother's knee dislocated like butter. Pop out, pop in, just like, lickety split. It was just like, it's like flowing water. Like, my grandma's like, you know, her kneecap would dislocate, she'd just pop it back in and then go back to what she was doing. Like, my grandmother would sit down or stand up and her kneecap would dislocate. Same with my mom. They, they could just be standing up and their knee would dislocate. <laughs> right. Someone in that amount of pain. I wanted someone to do something to stop it. But, I mean, in my mom's case, like, my grandmother... Because uh, they grew up in uh, Versailles, Ohio. It was very rural. Everyone knew each other, but, like, her gym teacher knew how to pop it back in you know people knew how to pop things back in and would do it and that's why it was so frustrating because it's like nobody will do it <laughs> but um finally my mom comes uh she flies into the gym she gets the you know emergency people to get the fuck out of the way and she just kind of pops it back in and like those guys are just like, whoa, that was badass. Because they've probably never seen a, a dislocation before. So they probably didn't know what to do. So I'll explain to you how you pop a kneecap back in. So in every case of mine, I'm in the fetal position. Knees bent. You know, I'm curled up. So to pop a knee back in, you cup the knee in your hand. And then as you're straightening the leg out, you push it back into place. So you're grabbing that piece. And as you're straightening, you're just popping that fucker back in. It is, I couldn't do it to myself. Like, like I'm shaking like a goddamn tree in a hurricane. <sighs> so, yeah, I had ongoing PT from that point on until I basically had physical therapy going from 2006 to 2011. Now, uh, she popped me, uh, she popped my knee back in, and then they take me out in a goddamn, you know, wheelchair, and I go home. I can't really do anything, like, I don't know 
why I have difficulty moving afterwards versus my mother and my grandmother. It might be due to several other issues. But, um... I, I have incredible leg weakness after a dislocation, and it takes months of intense physical therapy to even get muscle back. But be, because of the dislocation, I ch destroy my muscle. But, uh, yeah. So, January 19th, 2007. I have lateral release surgery on both of my knees. So we'll go into what a lateral release surgery is. <laughs> it is used to al realign the kneecap or the patella. The lateral release is an arthroscopic knee surgery and is an outpatient surgery. It's usually used to uh, correct a partially dislocated or a subluxated kneecap. The hope was that, um, so I'll just keep reading the conditions treated. So the kneecap moves up and down in a groove on the high end of the thigh bone as the knee bends. And some people, the kneecap is abnormally pulled toward the outside of its groove. When the kneecap does not slide well within the groove, cartilage irritation and pain can result. There are several reasons why this might occur. The most common of which is the tightening of tissue called the lateral retinaculum on the outside of the kneecap. When this happens, the patella begins to tilt laterally and place abnormal pressure on the joint. So the surgery is usually performed arthroscopically with, a, with keyhole incisions to minimize complications and speed healing. So basically, I had uh, three incisions on each knee so that they could mess with the, um, the muscles, the 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 tissue on the lateral side of both of my knees on the hope that it would stop uh pulling so it involves cutting through a tight retin retinaculum so that the kneecap will just sit properly in the groove to restore its normal alignment so we had that in january of 07 and i wore my knee brace for about six months after that. That one was a very easy, very quick surgery. Obviously, you know, in and out. But yeah, age of 14, I had my first knee surgery. <sighs> and that's when I started getting the nicknames. They got worse in high school. But yeah, I started wearing a J brace literally at all times except for at night at that it's actually really funny i found out i have a material allergy thanks to one of the knee braces so um uh i wore a specific knee brace for several years but you know it kind of it was rough you know it wasn't the most comfortable and because i wore it on like one knee so i wore it on my right knee for a while because obviously I dislocated the right one, so I didn't wear one on my left. And so I wear that, and then, you know, sleeping at night, I sleep on my side, so I'm constantly rubbing that up against my left, and it was very uncomfortable. So they're like, hey, we have a new brace. It's, it was a nice slip-on neoprene brace. It feels good, you know. It didn't have Velcro, it didn't have straps. It was just a nice smooth slip-on, felt comfortable. Needless to say, later that night, I was breaking out in full hives. Full body hives. Found out I was allergic to neoprene material. <laughs> so, yeah. We flipped back to my old brace. And of course, once I dislocated my left knee, uh, I was wearing braces on both sides anyway, so it didn't matter. But uh, after my uh, lateral release surgery, uh, I wore a J brace at all times except for at night because it was super uncomfy. Finally, about mid June, we determined that I don't need to wear my braces anymore. Um, 
Two weeks later, I tripped and dislocated my knee. June 30th of 07. What's worse is, it was actually s <laughs> Of course you remember the braces, Tay. I had those braces from 6th grade. <sighs> God. Until partway into junior year, I think? I don't really remember when I took it off. But yeah, uh, so I was celebrating my birthday because uh, I had tickets to go see Weird Al. So I took three of my friends. We saw that. And so we're up late at night. Like, we're talking about, like, 1 a.m. Oh, yeah, I've known Tay since first grade. But, uh, yeah, we were uh, having fun late, 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 late at night. And I decide I want to go and get some more cookie cake. It was first grade, but yes. So I go get some more cookie cake, and I'm, you know, snaking my way back into uh, the rec room. I trip over wire with some cookie cake in my mouth. And so I have a dislocated knee, cookie cake right next to me, and I'm in pain. <laughs> uh, one of my friends had to go wake up my mother. So she could pop my knee back in. <laughs> it sucked. All good, Mankies. You were close, though. <laughs> I was always crippled on the side of band camp. I was never allowed to run. Hmm, I guess. You'll probably remember this last dislocation, though. October 31st, 2007. Dislocated my kneecap in the band room of the high school. While wearing my knee brace. Uh, once again, I slipped I slipped on someone's clothing this time. Just kind of chasing around one of my friends, and I slipped and dislocated my knee. Had to get one of my friends to call my mom. She was in the process of making food to bring me dinner for band. And she gets a phone call from a random number, and she's and they're like, just, uh, Hi, is this DJ's mom? And she just drops everything she's doing because she knows that's not a good sign. <sighs> so yeah, my knee was probably out for 20 to 30 minutes in the band room. Uh, and I'll never forget my section leader's response to my kneecap being dislocated. He walks up to me, he's just like, so I take it I you won't be at practice tonight and I'm just like, no. He's like, Alright, bye. And he walked away. Granted, he was the brother of one of my bullies, so I wouldn't have expected him to care. <sighs> the good old Bella family. I've, I've always been a problem child. Oh, I did forget one. I subluxed my right knee while sitting in a J-brace. <laughs> August 3rd. The Bella family. Her older brother was the section leader. <laughs> he, uh... He came over to where I was laying with a dislocated knee and asked if, he was, if I was going to come to practice. I was just like, no. And he's just like, okay. <laughs> and walked away. <sighs> Obviously. I am the cutest. 
You mean they. <laughs> anyway, after that, then I started having my major surgeries. In April of 2008, I had bilateral tibia transplant surgery. This surgery is where they cut the tibia, they move it down, and then they screw it back in. So, we, in the course of seeing a knee specialist in Cincinnati, uh, we had determined that I have patella alta, which is where my kneecap sits a couple centimeters higher than normal, so it's not actually tracking within its groove properly. So that, in addition to my CMT, which was causing a weakness in my legs and the inability to grow muscle, uh, caused for it to pull out of track incredibly easy. Uh, we had determined all of that back in 2007. Because when we figured out that the lateral release surgery didn't work, we looked for a specialist, and that's how we found uh, Dr. Noise, who is a world-renowned knee surgeon. Uh, but the problem was, he refused to do the surgery until my uh, platelets closed. Because if he did the surgery too early, it could stunt uh, any kind of growth in my legs and he wanted them to be completely closed before he did any surgery which is why I ended up dislocating twice and subluxing once in between everything else but finally at 15 uh, the platelets were closed and he could do the surgery ugh it is the worst whenever he checks the knee because what he has me do is, you know, sit there, you know, nice and relaxed, and then he manipulates the kneecap in the groove. So he's just pushing it towards the inside, pushing it to the outside, pushing it up, pushing it down, wiggling it. And then, of course, he turns and talks to you, like, puts his hand on the knee and just slightly moves it around. And I'm just like, stop touching it. He was more worried that, uh, like, I would grow, like, another millimeter or two. Because I had mostly grown all the way. But, like, if he performed surgery on my right leg, and then uh, I still had, like, another millimeter or two, then the right leg would not have grown, but the left leg would have. And then, you know, I'd be uneven. <laughs> So that's why he wanted to wait. It's not like I wouldn't have grown a foot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, every time I go and see him, he manipulates the knee. And every time I tighten up and I tell him, stop it. No, don't do it. He's like, I'm going to, regardless if you do it. You can manipulate your knee right now at any time. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, so the bilateral tibia transplant, uh, like I said, they... They uh, cut the tibia bone, they move it down slightly, then they screw it in. Uh, I do have the x-rays of the giant screws in my leg if you want me to post it in Discord. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so that is about a six-month recovery period, of which... One to two months, I am to put zero weight on my knees. Like, on my leg. I am not allowed to put any weight. Capital D colon, exactly, Mankeys. So, I was basically put up for the rest of 2008 on my couch. But, I bought myself a Wii. And I had Twilight Princess and Smash Bros, so naturally I beat the crap out of those games very quickly. And lots of people brought me books to read. I do not have the surgery video. 
Though my mother, I'm sure, still has videos she took of me on her phone while I'm going under anesthesia. Shall I make you guys even more uncomfortable? <laughs> Because we found out that I have some difficulty with anesthesia. If I'm given, when I go under and I wake back up, I can't pee for one to two weeks. The first time, we didn't know that. <laughs> and, um, I had seven catheters in seven days while they tried to figure out if I needed it or not. That shit is uncomfy as fuck, as you can imagine. Ugh. But, um, yeah. So I had that issue back in 2007 with my surgery. I had the issue in 2008 with my surgery. And I had the issue with my other surgery in 2008. And I had that issue with my surgery in 2000 and... Let's see, when was that? That was before I lost my insurance, so that would have been... Not this, not that, not that. Three years ago, so 27... No, 2018, two years ago. <laughs> so all in all, I would say I had a total of, let's see, seven... Eight, nine, ten. I've had eleven or twelve catheters. And seven of them was in one week. I had to go to the emergency room. <laughs> because I had peed. <laughs> Yeah. I have a urologist, though. <laughs> anyway. So, like I said, uh, the bilateral to be transplant is a six-month recovery process with about one to two months where you can't actually put weight on your leg. I think it's one month you can't put weight on your leg, and then you start putting, like, 20%, 40%, 60%. Uh... Two months after my one uh, tibia transplant, we do it on the other leg. So, uh, <laughs> as I'm recovering from one, I start working on the other one. So I was basically put up for all of 2008, just recovering from surgery. Traveling four days a week down to Cincinnati for physical therapy. Uh, the people there are very nice. Actually, they're all still working there. I still visit them on occasion. Probably. That's a good question. I mean, so... I'm in, like, a full knee brace. My knee is the side of a goddamn cantaloupe. It's just... A, a lot of it is when I'm at physical therapy. You know, they'll just go do things. You know, they'll have me walk. They'll have me... Do you know, bending your knee after your knee is now in a new groove, just slightly lower, just a couple millimeters lower... Learning how to bend again is the hardest thing. It's funny. 
uh, because I was having so much trouble bending and they weren't having any of my shit, like, the people at physical therapy loved me, but they hated me because I could not bend my knee. So I had to go in for a quick outpatient uh, operation out of surgery in which they uh, knocked me out and bent my fucking knee. <laughs> While I was under, they bent my knee just so it wouldn't get stiff. So, uh, yeah. Um, we're actually almost out of time. So, we can do more of this later if you want. Going into, like, physical therapy and everything. But, uh, just to quickly go through the rest of my stuff. In the summer of 2011... Uh, I was still having a lot of knee pain, so I was going to, I went and I got a silicone injection in both of my knees, so naturally they just took a giant ass fucking needle, and you know that area right below the kneecap, there's a nice little gap, and then injected the silicone. I don't remember if it helped or not, but, um, yeah. Uh... Seven years later, 2018, uh, right before, wait, was it 2018? When did I get off of my parents' insurance? 2000 and, when I turned, before I turned 26, so two years ago. Yeah, to that, two years ago, uh, I went in for a quick surgery on both of my knees, a quick outpatient surgery. Yeah, we'll do a part two at some point. Uh... In which, um, I have trouble sleeping at night because of just flat out knee pain. And, oh my god, it hurts so much to sleep at night. And I went to see my uh, surgeon. He's like, that shouldn't be happening. And so he tells me what he can do is... So every time I dislocated my knee and everything and the fact that it was just in the wrong place, I was just destroying the cartilage behind my knee. And so he's like, I can perform a surgery in which I smooth out the cartilage back there. However, there's a 50% chance that it will work. If it works, it will stop. If it doesn't work, it will exasperate the problem and it will get worse. I lost that coin toss. I've lost a lot of coin tosses in this life. But, um, yeah. That has been all the operations on my knees. Uh, turns out I have some pretty bad arthritis in my knees. I don't remember which arthritis I have. But I have bad arthritis. Uh, I am due for total knee replacements in my 30s. And yeah. I'll leave you with the nickname everyone in high school gave me. Which was... I was known as No Knees. I actually have a article in my freshman year high school yearbook all about me and my knee problems you sadly remember what the fact that i was referred to as no knees or the fact that the yearbook has an has an entire two page spread about my knees if you want, I can take pictures of the spread and post it on uh, Discord. You'll have to wait till next week. <laughs> Both. Yeah. Alright. Next week, I will post those pictures. And after this, I will post the... Um, I will go through my phone and look for the um, picture of the x-ray. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Then that has been part one. Uh, I don't know when I'll do part two. Uh, this has been hard enough to get through. We'll either do it next week or we'll do it in a couple weeks. 
So... Oh boy. Thank you everybody for coming. This has been a great turnout. Uh, I do have to say, I'm honestly surprised with all the support I've gotten on uh, Spotify. You know, we have had a total of 41 people who have started this podcast. We've had 18 streams of the podcast, which is people who've listened to it more than 60 seconds. We've had 18 people who have started an episode, and I have five followers. Uh, oh, right. 41 starts means people have listened to any more than zero seconds. <laughs> no problem. I mean, it's an interesting thing. You know, it's not often you get to hear about somebody who's had a lot of shit in their life and is able to talk about it. And I've learned a lot. I didn't really get to go into what I'm not able to do, as well as my physical therapy and everything, but that'll be next time. But you guys got a lot of medical knowledge, so. Yes, you do, Mankies. And I appreciate it. Trust me, my knees always hurt. So. Anyway. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And until the next time, everybody. Stay funky, baby.